Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. Uh, I'm your host, Al Smith, and I've been uh, privileged to uh, study the writings of Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen for quite some time. And Archbishop Sheen had a great love for St. Therese, St. Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. And so many of you have been inquiring about the Holy Face, and uh, you have seen uh, pictures of me on social media, uh, sharing the devotion of the Holy Face, bringing uh, relics uh, to parishes and giving reflections. Uh, but I thought I would give you a treat today. I have uh, with me today on Radio Maria, uh, our good friend, Father Lawrence Carney, uh, who uh, has written on the Holy Face. And uh, many of you know of his writings through Tan Books and other publications. And so I want to uh, have a little bit of a time with Father Carney talking about devotion, talking about what we can do to bring this devotion in our life and um, tell some of the good stories of what has happened in the mission field. So uh, I bring to Radio Maria, Father Lawrence Carney, welcome to the show. Alan Smith, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I know that in the book that you penned, The Secrets of the Holy Face, uh, published by Tan Books, and I will provide all the links in the show notes uh, for everyone. We actually will have a, a little commercial later on in the show uh, with all the um, discount promo codes, but we love people to read this book, The Secret of the Holy Face. And in this book, you talk about the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen and how he was a friend of, uh, I like to say, the truth. And uh, he spoke about many of the evils in the world, but uh, maybe you could share uh, with our listeners um, your interest in Fulton Sheen and um, uh, again, how he's come into your life over the last few years. Sure. So my dad talks about when he was growing up that there were four channels on the television and Sheen had the prime time. I think it was like seven o'clock on a Friday. I can't remember or Saturday, but he would listen to him. And so the whole family, and it was amazing to hear that Protestants were listening to him. And some monks up in Scotland told me that the statistics for the Catholic Church in America were such that by the year 2050, the whole United States would be Catholic if the trends continued. And he worked for the propagation of the faith. With that, that was his main duty, was to propagate the faith to the United States. So he was doing amazing things. And I really look up to him. And I love how... He put on the costume. And that's what we used to call the the uh, the wear that the bishops wore. Um, he he got a beautiful picture of that behind you, and he just not only had the image, but he also had an eloquence with propagating the faith. And he even talks about communism. So I wanted to include him in my book because it would it would attract so many people like my dad and people around his age because communism is something that really hasn't gone away it's just changed his name so those are some thoughts on that right has he inspired your priesthood at all with his writings and uh, his love of the holy hour um i know there's so much that fulton sheen wrote with regards to the sacrament and the sacramental life uh, are there any things that he wrote that touched your life or you still put into practice today yeah, uh, the holy hour is definitely something I put into practice every day. And I recommend it for all priests and religious because it really, it's putting the kindling into the fire of the spiritual life. And even Father Garagou Lagrange talks about the holy hour for religious and priests. And it's recommended that lay people adopt at least 15 minutes a day of meditation, if not at church, at their homes. And I was just reading the story of the soul yesterday of St. Therese of the Sioux and how her daddy, who was a saint, St. Louis Martin, would take her uh, to visit the, the Blessed Sacrament daily sometimes and how that practice has gone away. So I think that Bishop Sheen just 
he pulled a lot of our tradition and just promulgated it back out again. And that's what I, that's kind of my job is, hey, folks, this is what we are. This is what we used to be. Let's do it again. Yes. And I think this devotion to uh, the holy hour uh, just ties in beautifully to devotion to the holy face. Um, the Eucharist is our Lord veiled. And yet when we spend time with our blessed Lord, we are in a way seeing him face to face. And I think this is what has really attracted so many people to the holy face devotion. It's a devotion of seeing our Lord face to face, but we have the great grace to see him where we're at. We can have an image of the holy face in our homes, in our office, in our cars. Um, it is an image that we can take with us. And I think everyone listening today and those watching on social media uh, can testify to having probably dozens of holy cards with the picture of our blessed Lord's countenance on it. And yet, do they just sit in the drawer? Do they stay there? Or do we pull them out and give them reverence, spend some time? Uh, these are all things that I think people are awakening to. And, you know, I think many people are probably asking the same question. Uh, Father Carney, what have you seen in your journeys, in your parish missions, um, the, the fruit of the devotion to the Holy Face? And how can I improve my prayer life? How can I, you know, step up to the plate and do more? Um, how do I get started? These are all questions that many of our listeners have. They're just saying, um, tell me why to have this devotion and give me some tips on how to do it. Um, I don't know, it's a big question, but I'll let the Holy Spirit inspire you to give uh, the answer. There's a lot of things running through my head but what I'll say is that God is permitting the revolution that we have here in 2023 for a greater good. And so as it gets worse out there in the revolution, there's people that rise up and they want to defend the rights of Christ the King. And this devotion fits the gap in between both the revolution and the counter-revolution, because it gives us something clearly from heaven. It gives us some marching orders, and it gives us a spiritual army where it's been approved by a pope, Leo the Thirteenth. So it's got all the canonical underfittings uh, to make this not just a private devotion, but a public one. And it's just so beautiful in the, in the field when I go to different parishes, different churches and different conference rooms. People come out after my talks and they're just, I want to, I want to sign up. I want to do this. It's, and it's like, I'm not very eloquent. I know that my English is bad. I don't know why I'm an author, but God always chooses the weakest to confound the wisdom of the world. I say that a lot, but what it is, is so much prayer because I pray constantly throughout the day when I'm not doing interviews or eating or sleeping and there's other people, like I, a chaplain of some nuns, and then all, all the people I know in my own life, and then people that are joining the ranks of the Arch Confraternity, they remember who encouraged them to join. So many people are saying they're getting providential things that happen to them, like the Holy Face shows up one day, and then the next day in another place, and then they're like, I need to do something about this, and then they get they get fired up and it's just a great thing. God wants us to fight for um, our passage into heaven so that we can merit uh, the eternal glory of the beatific vision. So, I mean, heaven is just infinitely smart by giving this devotion to us. And I like the timeline, the historical facts that it came out in the 1840s right before Communist Manifesto was was made public. And then this devotion has sort of had an eclipse. And now it's coming back again because we're in dire straits. Uh, in 2019, I thought for a while that the whole world might be enslaved. And that's what Venerable Leo DuPont said when he saw the Communist Manifesto. He says, if they get what they say they want to do, then the whole world will be enslaved to them. 
So I'll stop there for a minute. Yeah. And I think, I think you, you know, start to look at history. I think there's a lot that we can learn there. And these uh, revolutions, uh, they wreak havoc. And yet it was prayer that usually turned the tide. Uh, people in their homes praying for, uh, again, victory for our Lord and the church. And uh, victories were won um, through prayer. And I think as I thought of COVID um, and being locked in to my home and the churches being closed, uh, it was then that my wife and I uh, truly fostered the devotion to the Holy Face. Um, we couldn't go to the church to be with our Lord. So we, again, found him in our homes and found him through the image uh, of the veil of Veronica, just looking upon our Lord, knowing that he is crying, knowing that he is suffering uh, for our sins, but uh, suffering for the world. And uh, you cannot help but be moved to make reparation, to uh, you know, engage in the battle. And, you know, when I speak to my friends, I say, you know, we can start just with making reparation for the blasphemies that we hear. Um, you know, sadly, even children use the Lord's name in vain. Um, I can't go out um, to the grocery store without hearing blasphemies come out of uh, grandmother's mouths and <laughs> children's mouths. And it's just everywhere. I mean, I work in the construction trades, and uh, again, I hear the Lord's name uh, taken in vain time and time again. So uh, all these opportunities to make reparation, to uh, respond in kind to those curses with blessing. You know, we think of those beautiful prayers, sit nomen domini benedictu, vada, vada reta santana, the, the cries of many of the members of the Arch Confraternity, these beautiful prayers of reparation. But again, it's getting engaged in the culture, engaged in this battle. And I think this is where the Holy Face is inspiring people to say, I want to do things. I want to start and I want to learn this chaplet that I keep reading about, uh, these prayers. Um, maybe you could uh, spoke, speak for a few moments about um, prayer and when it comes to the Holy Face, the chaplet and uh, other little devotions, because, um, you know, I have, uh, you know, beside me, uh, little sachets, holy face medals, holy face crucifixes, uh, <laughs> scapulars. These are all things that people ask me to bring with me when I give parish missions. But I really just say to people, get a holy face picture in your home. It doesn't have to be an authentic veil of Veronica uh, relic from uh, the Vatican. It can just be a simple picture. Uh, I love the dollar store and I go to the dollar store and buy a dollar store frame and put the pictures into the dollar store frame so it can be there for me to look at and pray the prayers on the back of the card. Uh, I encourage everyone to do that, but start there. Start with making the Holy Face image uh, a, a focal point in your home and uh, put them all over. My grandchildren say, uh, Grampy, you have 12 pictures of Jesus all through your house. I counted them. And we try to have holy face images throughout the house, just as we had a crucifix in every room. I think there should be an image of the holy face in every room. Uh, that's my opinion. But tell me um, and our listeners, Father, about uh, the beauty of the prayers and some of the prayers that you would recommend and um, maybe some of the sacramentals that you find effective in your ministry. Yeah, so I was this week I was just contemplating how uh, the passionists, that religious order, they they focused on preaching on the passion. And so many scholastics and church fathers talk about meditating on the passion of Jesus Christ is so fruitful. And I, I agree, I want to be meditating more on the passion. And that's what this devotion is so much about. I was just reading um the nativity uh, by uh, saint alphonsus de la glory and he talks about jesus going through his sufferings and he asks, why did a god do this and it's because he loves us and he wants lovers so the question is do we want to be lovers because he loves us he, he's looking for lovers are we going to join that group that are lovers of the passion 
So that leads us to the chaplet of the Holy Face. I just, I can't, I can't say enough about this chaplet that was given to us by Sister Mary St. Pierre. And the main point of the chaplet is for the triumph of the Catholic Church. And it goes into the passion because it makes reparation for the five senses of Jesus and also the three years of his public life by saying an Old Testament verse from the Psalms, Arise, O Lord, and let thy enemies be defeated, and let all that hate thee flee from before thy face. A very powerful prayer that St. Athanasius, um, he asked the demons what they hated the most, and it's that in the Holy Bible. So that prayer of the chapel of the Holy Face reminds us of the different senses of Jesus when he was going through his passion. And so it's just a chaplet based on the passion, his uh, touch, his hearing, sight, smell, and, and taste. And they're all on the face, on the countenance of our beloved Lord, his sacred face. Then there's that mysterious prayer called the Golden Arrow Prayer. You know, I have a lot of friends that have the book called the Pieta, and they carry it in their back pocket. And the Golden Arrow Prayer is one of the prayers in that popular book. And it's it's a prayer that talks about how we need to make reparation for the name of God, and that all must bow down before his name, all on heaven, on earth, and in the hells. And even the sacred heart of Jesus, that's the mystery. The, the sacred heart represents the humanity of Jesus. But Venerable um, Leo de Pont said that the face represents his divinity. So this golden arrow prayer is, is a prayer that helps us to send uh, arrows to heaven that will open up the heart of Jesus to give us mercy. And Jesus gave it to us because of the blasphemies that were coming that were, he said, they were like poison arrows being shot up to God and, and they hurt him so much. So we have a chance to pray this prayer, the golden arrow. May the most holy, most, etc. May the most holy name of God, etc. be blessed, praised, adored, etc. I won't go into it all, but it's so neat. These these prayers are so important. And, you know, I think of the many miracles that the saints uh, tell of the power of the holy face. And I recall, I think, and I hope I'm right on this, but it was St. Vincent de Paul. And, and St. Vincent de Paul had a troubled child. Uh, no one could really work with this young boy. He was a bit of a menace. And he said, uh, I'll work with him. And he took the boy to his side and he said, son, I just want to ask you one favor. I want you to take this picture of the holy face of Jesus home with you. And I want you to promise me that you'll look at that picture every day. And the young boy said, is that all? He says, that's all. I just want you to look upon the image of this holy face every day. And so he took the holy face image home with him and went to his room and threw the holy face picture on his night table. And before he was about to go to sleep, he said, oh, I, I promised father I would look at that. And he looked at it for three seconds and then he put it down. Well, the second night he looked at the picture again, but for a little bit longer. And then the third night, a little bit longer. And the fourth and the fifth, and it continued. And on the 13th day, the young boy came back to St. Vincent de Paul and said, Father, I want you to hear my confession. I realized that I've made a mistake, I've done some bad things, and that my bad actions have caused our Lord to suffer. I see the tears in his eyes. I see the anguish in his heart. I want to change my life. That image of me looking upon the face of Christ has saved me. Um, when we think of that great scripture passage, Lord, show us thy face and we shall be saved. This young boy was saved by looking upon the image of our blessed Lord. And so this is what I say to people. Start with that. Spend a few moments every day 
And I can tell you from personal testimony, uh, not in not only in my own life, but in others, the holy face image um, grows on you. You want to spend more time every day looking upon the Lord. It doesn't get tiring. It doesn't get boring. It just, it, it's something fresh and new every day. And I encourage people to take the image and uh, put it somewhere where you can look at it um, every day and pray, and uh, you will see the change. You will see the beautiful change, not just in your life, but in the lives of those who practice this holy devotion. So uh, there's a story for you, and I know that you have many stories of the saints and how um, the Holy Face affected them, and uh, you actually mention a number of those saints in your book, uh, which, again, we want to recommend everyone to pick up a copy of, and it's called The Secret of the Holy Face, uh, published through 10 books, and we'll give you the promo codes and the links uh, later on in the program uh, and in the show notes. And uh, we encourage uh, others to um, not only pick up Father Carney's book, but uh, the Golden Arrow Prayer, um, or the Golden Arrow book, The Life of Marie de Saint-Pierre, uh, a, very, a very beautiful story. And to have a few little prayer books, and Tan Books actually has a beautiful little book, Devotion to the Holy Face. And um, we need to start somewhere, and uh, this little prayer book is simple, and it will help you to uh, grow in love for uh, our blessed Lord, and especially this devotion to the Holy Face. So uh, our thanks to our good friends at Tan Books for uh, giving us a discount here at Radio Maria. And of course, providing great resources um, uh, to us. We're all hungry for the faith. And so uh, we are really thankful to them. And of course, we're thankful to our good friends at Sophia Institute Press. Uh, they, of course, have been giving us uh, great discounts on all Sheen books that they carry uh, at Sophia Institute. And um, uh, I will make one more mention. I forgot to say about uh, Fulton Sheen and St. Therese, this beautiful book, uh, A Treasured Love Story. And it's also available through Tan Books. So uh, lots there at Tan Books. But uh, Father Carney, we're coming down towards the uh, our break here at Radio Maria. And um, I know you're working on another book um, on the Holy Face. And uh, maybe you could tell us how that is going. Sure. It's, it's, it's a book about total preparation to the total consecration to the holy face of Jesus. And some may say, well, at my baptism, wasn't I totally consecrated to Jesus? And the answer is yes. But this consecration is to the face. And I decided to have meditations for 33 days on the holy face of Jesus with a little prayer. And then I introduce the three ages of the interior life. Well, people may say, well, what, what's that, Father? Well, there's the interior life is going through the purgative way, getting rid of our mortal sins. And then it's going through the illuminative way, which is being given the light from God to know more about him because we can't love what we don't know. And then the last stage is the unitive stage where God created humans so that we can be in union with him. So as we know in the hell, holy queen, we live in this valley of tears. So since it's a struggle to be in union with God, that gives more merit. So it's a book that teaches people. It's a roadmap of the spiritual life, according to the thought of the Dominicans. And it pulls in this Carmelite school too. And it's a practical thing because it's 33 days. People can read this book in a month and they can get something out of it, which is they can be totally consecrated to Jesus. And it will help people that are devoted in the arch confraternity or confraternity as a holy face to not only be in that mystical army fighting against revolution, but it also will teach people how to grow deeper in the interior life because the revolution can take away a lot of stuff from us. Like they can take away our churches. They can take away our mass in the public place, but they can't take away our interior life. So a lot of men that I've been talking to saying, Father, this work is such a needed thing because we need to really work on the interior life and not work on getting angry all the time. We need to 
be able to be in union with God. And this book is just, I just give all credit to Father Gregor Lagrange, who I take a lot from, and I'm just condensing what he said, and what he wrote. And I'm going to read it over and over and over again so that I can preach from it without notes for my own spiritual journey, my own interior life. But as a priest, I have a duty to teach people how to be in union with God and to warn them of what the pitfalls are, to warn them of go right, not left. You know, don't go down that road. That's a dangerous road. And, you, you, you know, once we know the battle, we can be more circumspective. And it really becomes, for me at least, and I hope when people read it, it gives it it gears them up to make them more excited about wow, this is a whole new front that I need to really focus on. Like the story that you told us of uh, Saint Vincent de Paul in that picture, that was just a little nudge that the saint gave that man to do. And once he started to go down that road, he he got taken up by God with his free will. And that's what I hope this book does. Is makes a lot of saints because this this type of spiritual writing was was given to us in the 1950s but then we had a thing called modernism hit the synthesis of all airs and it shut down so many of these channels of our traditions so i want to bring it back to light and make it available in an easy way for people today in 2023 it's just a throwback it's just a traditional way of the of looking at the interior life and i hope it's really practical for people yes well we'll pray for the success of that book and its release and we'll have you back on radio maria to discuss that new book uh, when it does come out Uh, but i want to recommend everyone to visit uh, father carney's website Uh, it is uh, the martinians website it's www.martinians.org and uh, there, there is uh, so much to offer. There are links of how to enroll in the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face and the Confraternity of the Rosary. Uh, there are prayers. There are, uh, There is just so much. And we will, of course, have another episode of, with Father Carney where we will talk about uh, the Martinians in detail and the work they're doing. And uh, But uh, for your homework, I want you to... Um, go to their website, uh, again, www.martinians.org, and uh, find out more about the Holy Face, the Holy Face devotion, um, starting the you know leagues of St. Martin, uh, little prayer groups. Um, Tuesday is always our uh, favorite day uh, to pray, again, devotions to the Holy Face. And so uh, I'll leave that with you. And um, Again, I'm just excited to share that website again, www.martinians.org. And that's Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N-I-A-N-S, Martinians. And you'll see Father Carney and so much more there. Uh, Father Carney, uh, could we ask for your blessing uh, here at Radio Maria? And uh, we look forward to having you on the show again in the near future. Absolutely. Amen. Sit nomen nom benedictum, et ex hoc nucleus quaeum sepulum. Domine exaudi rasit mea, et coma mea satodini. Dominus vobiscum. Spiritutum. Benedictio de nipotentis patris, et fili spiritus antigen, et super vos et mani et semper. Amen. Thank you, Father Carney, for your help, and uh, of course, sharing a little bit uh, from the mission field, and so... Uh, We look forward to having you back again here on Radio Maria to talk a little bit more about the Holy Face and, uh, again, what God can do when we invite him into our lives. Uh, My friends, you're listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home.